Come watch your favorite team and earn points with our new Blazin Rewards program only at Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings, beer, sports. Hi, I'm Nathan Wilkham, manager at the Longhorn Steakhouse here in Salina, Kansas. We are proud supporters of our local high school sports team and our community. I'd like to invite you to join us for a great meal at Longhorn Steakhouse. We are open Sunday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m., and Friday and Saturday from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. We hope to see you at our restaurant, and when you do, ask for me or our managing partner, Sarah Grimes. We'd love to say hello. At Domino's, they work hard to make it easy for you to earn free pizza. How hard? We probably don't have enough time to talk about all the ways they've invented for you to order, but we do have time to talk about the new ways you can earn Piece of the Pie rewards points towards free pizza. Now you can earn points when you place an order by phone or in store. That means you can earn points any way you order. If you would like to enroll, see dominoes.com slash rewards or call Domino's. Papa John's is proud to provide this week's meal to the hardworking Friday Night Football crew at Community Access Television. While watching the big game, don't forget to order your freshly made pizza at PapaJohns.com. to Friday night football here for another week of Salina football. This time our game, the 1-4 Salina South Cougars against the 0-6 Newton Railers. I'm your host, Colin Crowder, alongside my partner in crime, Charles <laughs> Ross. <laughs> so should we look for a tough game tonight? I think we're going to look for a competitive game. Uh, both teams certainly not having the seasons they probably would have wanted to. But I think we're going to have a competitive game, hopefully not too sloppy of a game, but I'm looking for a good one today. Salina South lost last week, had the game here. They lost 42-17 against the Hutch Salt Hawks. And last week, Newton fell 37-17 to Goddard. Colin Schreiber, number 13, will be the representative out on the field as team captain for the Cougars. Hopefully the Cougars aren't looking ahead to next week's game. And certainly, yeah, next week being South Central. Have that game here, of course. But I feel like when you've gone one and four so far this year, you can't overlook any team. That's what we say, but when we got a team that's 0-6, you might think this is going to be a cakewalk, and we look forward to next week. Newton has won the toss. They will defer. Salina South will get the ball first. Cougars 
on offense first. It does appear that, and maybe what we suspected a little bit, number 26 He's not playing tonight. for the Cougars. Brant Cox is on the sideline in shorts. So my guess is we may be seeing Owen Kulos, number 32, in at running back for the Cougars. And it'll be interested to see who they use for the punt game as well as they usually use Brant Cox in that area as well. I think they used a kicker the last week. They may have. And it looks like they're going to have Jackson Hayes, Kyron Whitaker, Back as the two backs for Salina South to receive. And just waiting for the final 10 seconds to dial off the clock. Colin Hirschberger will kick us off. For the Railers. And we are underway here at Salina Stadium. A little bit of a shorter kick fielded around the 10 yard line by Jackson Hayes. And oh, is going to make it maybe just shy of the 20 yard line. Maybe they'll give it to him before he's taken down. Not much going in terms of blockers on that return. Yeah, the Cougars will start first and 10. Give them the 20 yard line. Weston Freeze will be the quarterback. And that's gonna be first down run the middle it's going to be not much of a gain there and that again is number 11 Owen Bully in at running back we see him play a lot on the defensive side sometimes playing at receiver for the Cougars took that first one there going to be a throw out Jackson Hayes nice block out on the end by Zachary Davidson End up taking his man to the ground. Luckily not called a hold. But we'll pick up around three yards, make it a third and seven. Cougar's going to line up quick. Oh, and I, we got an offside. Too. I think number 52 went into the neutral zone. Yeah, earlier on that last pass play, I think he could have got a few more yards before he ran out of bounds. Uh, maybe they're able to make up some of those yards with that offsides. Third and seven now becomes third and two, much more manageable for the Cougars. They're going to run option pitch to Owen Bully quick. Some good blocking out there and a nice strong run. Definite first down. By Owen Bully. He's going to easily pick up the first down. Get it around to the 37-yard line. Cougars again going to line up quick. That was a well-executed ex play there. I'm going to swing it out again. Jackson Hayes going to have one-on-one, -on -one, but then block from Zachary Davison not long enough as he's thrown down after a gain of two. And really, we haven't seen Salinas South run the option all that much, so it was really nice to see them run that on that third and short situation. Really like to spread the field a lot. And they did spread it quite a bit. First down. Yes, be he's got a man. Down. That's Colin Schreiber. They're maybe going to look for a flag. Coach Sellers has the hands out. Not very happy with that. I don't know if it was necessarily just incidental contact, but I think there was certainly a reach there by the Newton Railer defensive back. He still should have caught that. Yeah. That'd be third and eight now, three receivers. The bottom of your screen, Free's gonna step up on the run. Wide has Colin Schreiber, has the first down. 
And has it to the 41 yard line. Nice reception there by Shriver, especially after the drops of the week prior. Good to see him get a reception. Well, early. he'll drop it and then he'll make some fantastic click catches during the game. Oh, and Bully's going to get first oh, down no run, but he's going to be hit in the backfield for a loss of a couple. Maybe 83, Chase Buffalo in on that tackle for the Railers. You're going to swing it out. Jackson Hayes again. Schreiber just kind of misses a block. And Jonah Remsburg takes advantage and takes down Jackson Hayes. That's going to be another yard loss. So after the big pass play, two straight negative plays make it third and 14 for the Cougars. It's obvious, certainly a passing down here. Good he protection. Going to look He's for Schreiber. Open. Just a little bit long. Maybe just another step, and he would have been underneath it, but just a little too far out. And yeah, hey. he threw that a little too far out. I mean, if he would have just shortened that up a little bit, he had the man wide open. And that puts fourth and 14. It looks like the offense is going to stay out on the field, kind of that in-between area if you punt it or if you go for it. But they're going to go for it here. Has a free man rushing at freeze. Hit as he throws. And that's going to be picked off. And right. if you're a railer, that's certainly a mistake. Definite mistake. So instead of knocking that ball down and getting it on your own 45, you intercept it. And now you've got it on your own 14-yard line. It certainly looks good on the stat sheet, but that is not what you wanted if you're the head coach of the railers. So essentially, that was a pretty good punt by the Cougars there. That was fantastic punt. I wonder if you can get that fortunate all the time. I know, right? And number seven, Ben Schmidt for the Railers will be out on the field to conduct the offense here. That's going to be a handoff to number 21 and tackled by number 21 of the Cougars. Luke Simpson takes the tackle on Kenyon Forrest. The sad thing is he, he didn't have enough time, but he had a man there in the open. After that first play there, as the Railers lose five yards, now the ball in their own nine. Another run to Forrest here. A little bit better protection. Whoa. Just maneuvering at a slim's pace. Doesn't look like he had that many running lanes, but still able to scoot through for a first down. Yeah, it looked like he had a few moves there that he kind of wiggled through there. Ball now on the 25-yard line of the Railers. They're going to have... Three receivers at the top of your screen on the short side of the field. Another handoff to Forrest. This time going to be tackled from behind. Looks like Brandon Fletcher for the Cougars was in on that tackle. Coming from the backside to take down Forrest. And if you're going to fake the throw like the quarterback did there, you've got to do that a lot sooner. You don't wait till he's already around the corner and then try and act like you're going to throw something. And really, it seems like the first three plays for the Railers have been the exact same play. I'm not sure if it's a read for the quarterback, Schmidt, but he's been giving it each time to his running back, Forrest. And, yeah, we're going to get a false start. I saw just a tiny nudge, I think, by one of the receivers at the top. Maybe it might have been number 15. Wow, that's a good way to kill momentum. Certainly, a negative play and then, or at least, excuse me, the no play and no gain on the play and then uh, backing them up five yards. Yeah, you're back in the territory where you got the first down from, so that's never good. They're still nowhere close to where they would have had the ball if the 
defender would have been able to bat it down. But first throw of the night from Schmidt's going to look Got for number man. one. And that's going to be incomplete. They're looking for Peyton Maxwell. Did have Q Hill in coverage. Mr. Q was pretty close to him, but that still was a uh, where he could have caught it if it would have been thrown a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Certainly, if there's any way to just give a positive on that throw, at least Schmidt was able to throw the ball where only his receiver could even possibly get it. At least he didn't underthrow it on there to allow Q Hill to get a good s grab at it. But third and 15 has a man in his face, throws, fighting for the ball. A.J. Johnson and Maxwell fighting for it, but they're going to rule it incomplete. And we almost had a shade of what we saw last week of A.J. Johnson just ripping a pass away from an offensive receiver. Yeah, I don't think that's the side you want to throw it to. That's a four-year varsity starter there. Fourth down, offense staying out, but the quarterback with certainly a little bit farther back for just a pooch kick. Jackson Hayes fields oh, it really good field good. position. Oh, and Keeps the feet going out of bounds back to where the original line of scrimmage was for the Railers. And really, I don't mean to keep hammering and a really good return by Hayes, and not to keep hammering on that interception, but that's just complete field position change right there. But you got to know what's going on when you're down there on the field, whether you need to catch it or whether you don't. And I think he was just thinking that he needed to get an interception. Now the Cougars have the ball on the Railer 24-yard line. And they're going to start now first and 10. I believe we see might be Owen Kulos. Three wide. Oh, a pitch. And, and it's that on the is ground. the Owen Kulos, but did end up putting the ball on the ground, but Kulos able to get back on top of it. And maybe just some jitters, hoping to settle him down a little bit more, but we're hoping he can settle down just a little bit, or we may be seeing Owen Bully in the game a lot sooner again. But that loses five yards. And that's going to be a pass complete to Schreiber. And it's going to be shoved out of bounds after a nice gain. Close to the first down six. Luke Hirsch shoves him out. And Owen Bully is going to be back in the game at the running back position. Tayon McDaniel is going to be at the bottom of your screen. It was a receiver to look out for a few weeks ago. Jackson Hayes going to get... One, get by one, stays in bounds, cuts inside, gets it down to the five-yard line. First and gold. I didn't say first and goal. I said first and gold. I like that. Might be, <laughs> that's what I might be. That might be catching on. First and goal from the five. Handoff, Owen Bully up the uh, middle. Touchdown, Cougars. Owen Bully with the five-yard run. And I feel like just watching him run that ball, there was just – I can't see his eyes from up here, but it just seemed that he was running with some determination uh, that he was going to get in that end zone. Definite determination. And on for the extra point, and that's going to be blown to dead right before Caden Budkey is able to kick it. Maybe they'll get that on the kickoff, huh? Oh, wow. And they're going to decline the penalty. Or Coach Sellers is looking to decline it. I'd say you certainly want that just to give your kicker just a little bit more room. Kick is up. And it is good. After the five-yard touchdown run by Owen Bully, Cougars are up 7-0 to zero over the Railers. And it really wouldn't have been possible without that 
just battle of field position in the first couple of series for both teams. That's why you really got to know what's going on on the field so that you don't make an interception like that. Six minutes, four seconds left in our first quarter of action. Cougar strike first on their second drive of the game. Really, I felt like specifically set up by the return by Jackson Hayes. Really put the Cougars in a really good field position to be able to march that ball about 25 yards for the touchdown. But he will do the honors as well here. Kick's going to be a little bit short, fielded around the 23-yard line. And number 15 hit, and he certainly did stop and just got a walloping on. Yeah, Xavion Martin took the brunt of that hit. And he stopped him right there on the spot. You go no further. Railers will start their second drive on their own 29-yard line. Let's see if that Cougar defense can stand tall yet again. And Schmidt again going to hand off of a read to Forrest. And it's going to be met right at the line of scrimmage after a host of Cougars. Stop him for no gain. Trey Berlin looked like he was in on that tackle. <laughs> Schmidt here on second down. Another give to Forrest. He's and is going maybe going to get... Maybe get a yard or two out of that down. But we'll bring up around a third and seven. And he will stop there, too. That wasn't like he was going anywhere else. They had a good hold on him. So far, this uh, Cougar defense has looked rather impressive. I don't necessarily want to say it's been predictable so far, but certainly the Railers running that kind of read play and have given it to Forrest each time. See what happens when they decide to pull it back. A little bit of a bobble Ball snap the there. Throw over the middle. And Jackson Hayes looked like he was there to pick it off. But wasn't able to. They were trying to find number six, Jake Schmidt. But the pass of the will be incomplete and bring up fourth down. Boy, and that quarterback didn't have much time either. Certainly and they didn't. were in there. Certainly didn't help the kind of bobbled snap that was probably a little bit low into the left of the quarterback. They'd probably expect another pooch kick here, but not lined up nearly as deep as he was last time. Oh! And offsides is going to make this a more manageable fourth down that the Railers might attempt to go for it. But the officials are talking about it. Maybe there was a little bit of movement by the Railers before uh, the Cougar the, jumped. There was like a whole bunch of them that jumped. And it will be an offsides on the Cougars. Fourth and seven's a heck of a lot different than fourth and two. And I would certainly expect the Railers to be in better field position to go for this now. And Cougars kind of going to come for him. There is the pooch kick. And Cougars don't have anybody back that's going to take some Railer bounces inside the 20. We'll roll past the 15, and we'll be down around the 13-yard line. That came out pretty good for the Railers that time. 
Yeah, and I'm really worried about a couple of the Salina South Cougar linebackers lined up kind of on the line to kind of anticipate that pooch kick. I'm worried that they might get not necessarily burned at some point on that, but they usually they were kind of lined up as if the quarterback was going to do a quarterback sneak, but he's certainly not going to do that from a shotgun position. So I'll be interested to see how that evolves the next time the Railers attempt that. But the Cougars back on the field. Freeze going to look down man. and finds Teon McDaniel. Man. Needs to kick it in gear before he's pushed out of bounds at around the 28-yard line of the Railers. A huge first down throw and catch. He had a big catch last week, too, also, I believe. Yeah, that was uh, in the corner of the end zone for one of the Cougar touchdowns in the first half. And they got a couple railers to move, but not close enough into the neutral zone. Cougars getting the play from the sideline, still 16 on the play clock. And they'll swing it out. Jackson Hayes, good blocks by Davidson. And I think Jackson Hayes just lost the ball. He did. I think it just slipped out of his hand, and Newton recovered it. I didn't even see it fall out, and I think Coach Sellers is arguing for an incomplete pass. But it certainly looked like he caught it and was moving upfield with it. They're going to talk about it, and they are going to say Newton Ball. I didn't necessarily see him juggling it, or maybe they were saying that he was down. Maybe that's what Sellers was arguing about. But Newton does take over off the turnover. And again, it's on the far side of the field and wasn't able to easily be viewed from our vantage point. But first and 10 for the Railers. Schmidt at quarterback. And another, no, not this time, is going to be a give. And then he's going to be intercepted by Owen Bully. And he's got two men to beat, but going to try and... Cut it back, but then going to be thrown down by Kenyon Forrest, the running back. And you can be upset at that previous play by the Cougars, but certainly back in business one play later. Willie, as many men as he had over there at that time, there should have been some blocking going on, and he should have been taking that to the house. It did seem like he had a wave of blockers, but then didn't really think like anything substantiated. Now the Cougars will take over inside the red zone, looking to punch it in yet again. Free's going to keep it. Has some blockers out in front and will be hit inside the 10. I think that was just a good time of letting that play develop by Freeze and not just immediately running forward. Kind of allowed some Newton Railers to overshoot a little bit. And free well, then just red right the by old him. Cross buck from the old days where they cross each other, the running backs. Freeze this time gonna roll out, throw it short to number twenty one before he's thrown out of bounds. Luke Simpson, I think, playing some offense, not usually playing offense. There's a lot of not usuals going on tonight. Certainly. Especially when you look in that backfield. We certainly have uh, also number four, Jarrett Pittenger, also yeah. there. You usually see him on defense as well. And first down throw out to Schreiber and almost tipped it and came down with it. Could have maybe been some contact on the defensive side. If anything, you could say the defender, the defender didn't turn around and look for the ball. At all. Jarrett Pittenger coming off. Bullier, Bully, excuse me, coming back on. It's going to be third and goal from the five. Certainly want to punch it in here. Bully going to take it and all the way into the end zone. Had a man reaching for his jersey, but ran right through it. And Owen Bully, for the second time, punches it in from five yards out.
Caden Budkey on for the extra point. That kick is up and good. With 3.29 left still in the first quarter, Cougars lead 14-0. And I don't know about you, Charles, but I think we have an early contender for our player of the week so far. We definitely do have that. Already in the first quarter, Owen Bully has two touchdowns and an interception. Yeah. Definitely a front runner. And they'll have Peyton Maxwell. Has the Cougars punted it? I don't believe so. And that kick from Budkey is going to be fielded around the 18-yard line and really holding that ball loosely out there is number four. Jonah Remsburg was looking like he was going to dribble inside the paint. <laughs> that football was really holding yeah. it outside. <laughs> there was a couple of high tackles, too. That's uh, very dangerous. And the Cougars will hope their defense can hold yet again. And this couple Cougars going to crowd that line, handoff for us. They're going to try and get the edge, but he will be down. met two yards in, maybe give him three. But again, seems like he's running at full speed, then just hitting a Cougar and then just absolutely hitting a wall and not going anywhere else. The defense is playing a good game, too. Owen Bully and A.J. Johnson will be at the bottom of your screen on the two big receivers. But again, it's going to be a oh. forced inside run before he's tripped up immediately, then able to try and boot it outside, but then taken down by several Cougars. One being number 78, Brandon Fletcher. And he'll now come off the field and bring up third and seven. I continue to say that that defense is playing well tonight. They're just getting a lot of interruptions for the offense. Rather, it just be men in the backfield or men in different positions. Just allowing those plays to slowly develop. Schmidt back to throw. Going to launch, trying to find Maxwell. Got Has him man. open. Pass complete. Bully and Jackson in pursuit, but no way that they're going to catch Maxwell. Just as I spoke how good the defense is playing, they give up a touchdown to the Railers. Big, huge throw to Maxwell and certainly had some separation. And then once that pass was complete, the feet did the rest and just out ran Hayes and Bully. And the extra point is up good. and good. But certainly, I wonder how much that those constant runs to Forrest that didn't get any yards, lost yards, actually set up that touchdown to well, Maxwell in that instance. Th and a couple of times they've tried to pass, it's went nowhere. But that time in particular, they let the man get behind you. You never let the man get behind you. And with that touchdown, 
The Railers cut the lead in half, be 14-7 is our score now. Cougars still up on top. Now, what better thing could they do now than to take it in themselves? Of course, a lot of Cougars kind of standing by the 50-yard line. Ran a similar thing when I was in high school. Had a lot of the special teams guys bunched up before we then spread out. Now you'll see the Cougars spreading out a little bit more. Before Hirschberger kicks this away. Field about the 13 by Jackson Hayes. Going to get another crack at it. And we'll find some daylight and get it across the 35 to the 36-yard line. So much better return that time by the Cougars. One fifty-two still left in the first quarter. Kind of a long first quarter it's compared been to a our real long first quarter compared to our other games. I don't know why, because it ain't been a lot of passing going on. Certainly, a little bit of oh a there. low snap. They throw it out to Davidson. Breaks one, spins out of another, and but finally will be pushed back and pushed out of bounds by Remsburg of the Railers, but will pick up seven yards on first down. Good. That was Cash a good seven Zachary yards Davidson. also. Whoa, they got him. Number 65 for the Railers. Got a little too excited. He was headed that way, wasn't he? Certainly. <laughs> and certainly that's the times where the Cougars line up quick, and then they do kind of a hard count, and then they look to the sideline for the play, so they certainly weren't expected to snap it at that point. Jackson Hayes kind of on a fly sweep. He's going nowhere. And will be wrapped up. In the backfield. Luke Boston takes down Jackson Hayes for a loss of three. Yeah, it looked like they had that one sniffed out the whole time. If you look, the defensive end had it curved on this side, too. Freeze now going to look over the middle, man. but ball will be tipped by Luke Boston. So good plays by Boston back-to-back. -back. And that, just like that. It'll be third and 13 for the Cougars. And another Jackson passing pass. down. Going to throw left side. Daddy. Finds Jackson Hayes right at the marker for the first down. And a good job by Jackson Hayes just knowing where to be where that ball was delivered by Weston Freeze for the first down. Nice 14-yard pickup on third and 13. Maybe that's why the quarter is taking long. There is a lot of passing going it's on. True. Or a lot of first downs where the clock's stopping momentarily. Yeah. Freeze over the middle throws for oh. Tayon McDaniel, but a little bit low. Kind of dangerous over the middle of the field there. It, it seems like as though they would make mix up some running in there. I don't believe they've run it. This drive so far, Jackson Hayes coming off, A.J. Johnson out on the field, staying with that five-wide setup here on second and ten, getting some pressure, going to step up into the pocket, has room to run, throws it. Oh, was and, he past the line And of really, scrimmage? and that's the thing, I, I clearly thought he was past the line of scrimmage, but they're going to say a pass complete. Wow. No flag thrown but certainly looked a good two, maybe three yards past the line yeah, of scrimmage. Yeah, he definitely looked past the line of scrimmage we to We do me. have a couple Cougars down. Well, you got A.J. down. One of that? them. He was down, but yeah, I, I think that was who they were looking for out on that end. But I think at the, at the moment, I was just kind of shocked there wasn't a flag thrown. 
I think that's where my 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 eyes immediately went to was looking for a flag. Yeah, it definitely looked like he was past the line of scrimmage. And not really. I also looked at the Newton sideline. Didn't seem like there was that much of a protest or an argument from the Railer sideline. But certainly looking down on the injured Cougar right now. As he's kind of bent over, maybe head on the ground, does have his helmet off. 25 seconds left here in the first. Wow, this seems to have been a long first quarter. He looks like he's AJ's getting up. And looks like he's able to walk off under his own power, certainly. Will at least have to come out for a play. Coach Seller is looking, having some words with the white hat official before walking by. But the play is going to stand. It'll be first and 10 for the Cougars just outside the red zone on the 22-yard line. And it's going to be handoff. It looked like that might have been Luke Simpson, but he's going to be wrapped up even with a high tackle by the railer there. And it will be no gain on the play. And that will finally bring an end after a 21-point first quarter. Cougars lead 14-7 over the Railers. We'll be back with our second quarter right after this. Hi, I'm Nathan Wilkham, manager at the Longhorn Steakhouse here in Salina, Kansas. We are proud supporters of our local high school sports team and our community. I'd like to invite you to join us for a great meal at Longhorn Steakhouse. We are open Sunday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m., and Friday and Saturday from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. We hope to see you at our restaurant, and when you do, ask for me or our managing partner, Sarah Grimes. We'd love to say hello. And welcome back to the start of quarter number two between the Cougars and Railers. Again, Cougars leading 14-7 with two five-yard scrambles by Owen Bully that puts the Cougars up. One touchdown over the Railers. And Free's going to roll out right side, and that's going to be picked off. Oh, picked off, almost bobbled, but then going to drop it. Felt like I saw the ball on the ground after that, and we'll see if he still had possession. And I think they are still going to rule that it is an interception. Yeah, he definitely picked that off. I want to say that might have been Zachary Davidson out there as maybe the intended receiver, but the throw just behind him and was going to be picked off. And the Cougars turn it over one play into the second quarter. And the Railers will take over on their own 19. Railers certainly not having good field position or starting field position at all tonight. And certainly first down runs like that after a loss of two or three. Going to back them up a few more. And Forrest May, not sure if he's breaking even. Don't Unfortunately, don't have any stats here, but really just not gaining much at all. He's had multiple carries, but I'd be shocked if he has even 20 yards. Schmidt going to take that's it down, going to throw, and that's just going to wow. be dropped. Davion Martin had no one around him, so a few ghosts must have spooked him. Yeah. Because he had no one over there. Easily well, would have had running rooms for a first down, you would think. And sometimes that's the most dangerous time when there's nobody around you. Nerves just <laughs> won't let you catch it. I certainly knew that more than 
more than anyone back in my <laughs> time playing. But third and 12, Schmidt with a long step drop. Going to actually throw a screen, and that's just going to be read perfectly. And tackled, I believe that was Jarrett Pittenger out there. Tackles Forrest for another loss. And that'll bring up fourth and 14. Expect yet another pooch punt here. Cougars aren't as close on the line. Line drive punt. Jackson Hayes not going to go after. I think that's a smart decision. And with that, Cougars are going to get great field position as <laughs> Peyton Maxwell tries to pull one over on the officials by moving the ball one yard. And certainly won't get that. But another nice defensive stand by the Cougars following that turnover. Get another three and out, including some negative yardage on the Railer offense. Well, can they capitalize right now? That's the real question. Can the offense capitalize? Still certainly a game, but, I mean, with the defense that the Cougars have been playing, really barring just one play, they really played outstanding. Jackson Hayes, fly sweep, going to actually cut it up pretty early and only going to gain about two yards on that first down. And it looks like we may have an injured railer on the ground. Fifty-eight four. The Railer is looking like he's coming on. Don't appear to have a fifty-eight on the roster. We are provided. We could just call him Alex, but I think we're going to stay with <laughs> fifty-eight. <laughs> Go. Second and 10, Cougars Simpson lined up as the slot. We'll be blocking. Throw out to Schreiber. Nice block there by Jackson Hayes. And able to pick up a few more yards after contact is Schreiber. Is going to be maybe, they're going to say he's got the first down. Wow. I thought he may have been a yard short. I but thought the, he was a little bit short too. They're going to give him the first. Cougars getting line of line of, going to line it up quick. And they'll slow it down, look for the play. Simpson now going to move from left to right. Owen Bully in at running back. And they're going to throw, and I couldn't see if that ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage wow. or not, but it really just ended up really into the dirt for Colin Schreiber. I don't know. what That really didn't make much sense to me. It didn't seem like there was much. A short side there, of the certainly. field and just a little short pass, and the defensive back is up on him. Now Owen Bully is going to get a run off some pulling guards. And that's going to pick up six yards. Maybe give him seven on that. Bring up a pretty manageable third down now. Cougars again going to line it up quick. Going to snap it quick. Hand off Bully again. Going to run the exact same play. And we'll see where they mark him. Seems to be right at the sticks. And Looks like give him a yard. The they're going to say it's a first down. Back to back powerful runs by Owen Bully, who's been pretty impressive so far tonight. Uh, yes, he has. New set of downs going to run the option. Nice. Almost a nice read by Weston Freeze, but then is tackled right after. It seemed to be the man he read, he made a good decision, but then there was just another defender there that didn't get blocked that yeah, brought him I'm, down. I'm not so sure he shouldn't have pitched that. I mean, it looked like that outside was wide open. But sometimes it's hard to see when you're right down there in the action. And we may have a... Time, Time out, out by the Railers. They'll be there first of the half. With 
8.49 left before the break. Cougars moving the ball, did just have a negative play for a couple yards, but certainly they've been able to make up the yards. Pretty impressive play, I'd say, from the Cougars offense for the most part. The running game has been really successful. The passing game has been successful at times, especially when they need it to be successful. I feel like first and second downs aren't as successful as when they really hunker down on third down and get their receivers right to the sticks to pick up the yards needed. But certainly seeing a lot of personnel we're not used to seeing on the offense and defensive side of the ball for the Cougars. And second and 12, they're going to run that option yeah. again. Quick pitch out to Bully, and really wow. not much going there. Seemed like some pretty failed blocks, but we have a flag at the complete other end of the field. Helmet of Colin Schreiber comes off. And I want to say this is going to be on Luke Hirsch as an unsportsmanlike conduct. I didn't see it. What did he do? And well, I saw in the previous play, they were kind of fighting to the ground just on the far side. There wasn't a flag thrown, but I think at this point they just continued on to this play. And I think Hirsch is going to get tagged with the flag here as the helmet of Schreiber came off. And really, when your defense for Newton has really come up strong in those last two plays, creating negative plays for the Cougar offense, a somewhat selfish play, not even related to the play at all. Right. Gives the Cougars the ball inside the red zone. Free's going to pull it from Bully. Throws into the end zone. Wide, wide open. open. Touchdown. Cougars. Tajon McDaniel on the S of the Mustangs. And really, just nobody out there. Yeah, he couldn't have been more alone. <laughs> I don't think they're that. He just had free daylight. He had Those are the kinds you drop, but he caught it. Yeah, and I think it maybe helped that he actually went to his knees <laughs> yeah. to catch that. He just knew that he was one in the end zone, certainly, and had no one around him. Yeah, and the extra point... Bud Key is up and good. Unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on the Railers Costly. set up. Set up a one play touchdown. Costly, very costly. I don't think they've punted yet, still. Really, they hadn't. There was that first drive of the game where they could have punted, but certainly, as we talked about, that interception that essentially was a punt yeah. by Weston Freeze. That's but probably yeah. the best punt you could have had. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you got it inside the 20, <laughs> everything. <laughs> but 8.32 left before the break. Cougars regain that 14-point lead over the Railers. Yeah, and that first one, that's when you want to have uh, the hands that let it drop. Well, they got that seven back that they gave up earlier. And another stop by the Cougar defense and another good drive by the Cougars could really start putting this out of reach to make it 21. Certainly hypotheticals for down the road. But the Cougars already with 21 first half points as we're only about 16 minutes in and Railer going backwards feels it and then tries to cut it back yeah. and then falls down. And usually I was kind of surprised he ran back for that as I would say most times they teach on kickoff, don't run back for the ball. But again, that's Xavion Martin who's made a couple mistakes we've seen so far for he the Railers. He slipped and that was, that was it. But, you know, the funny thing is if he would have kept going or he would have broke it, they would have said great play. Certainly. 
First and 10 Railers again, ball on their own 16. Schmidt going to hand off Forrest, and again, maybe a yard. Multiple Cougars there to take him down. If I'm the Newton Railers right now, I'd go back up top like I did earlier for the touchdown. I certainly haven't seen the passing game all that much for the Railers. Maybe, I want to say, three or four plays total. Especially the long ball. And that's going to be a throw this time left side. That's going to be Xavion Martin. And after he gets by one Cougar, will be tackled right at the 20. Maybe Ford Progress gives him the 21 as he fell forward. Bring up third and five. Be another big play here. You'd certainly expect a passing down here. Well, they got three wide outs. Drew Nelson kind of close to the line of scrimmage, then backs out. Going to look Go. and roll out. Is Schmidt throw up in the air? And that's going to be incomplete. Did try to find Avery Dutcher, but Owen Bully, Jackson Hayes, Luke Simpson, names we called on offense, out there defending the secondary for the Cougars. So bring up fourth down, you certainly expect it to maybe be a punt situation, but you may see them go for it here. Certainly dangerous, and they're going to try and get the Cougars to jump off sides. Had maybe a couple leaning, but not enough to have them jump. We may see another hard count here, six, but no, they are going to punt it away. High punt going to bounce right side, going to stay on the Cougar side of the 50-yard line. And they were looking at a little bit of extracurricular. They had a number 70 for the Railers that fell over, and I think he may have just fallen over on his own as a couple of Cougars looked back and was like, you're not going to throw that, are you? <laughs> now with 7-0-1 and 21-7 lead, would be a good time to score and kind of put it away a little bit. Cougar's going to line up with two receivers on each side. Right. Schreiber's going to be at the top. They're going to pump fake that way. Going to look He's got deep a for Hayes. That throw's oh. going to be behind him. It's picked and that's going to be picked. That's Remsburg. He's got some blockers out front in a lane. Could have maybe cut it back for some more. But really, Jackson Hayes was running straight down the field, and that ball was just short, tailing away from him. Short. If he doesn't throw it short, he's got a man there, roll it wide open. And another interception for Freeze. I want to say a total is now up to three interceptions for the Cougar quarterback. And Railers will take over again. A little pump fake by Schmidt, throw over the middle, pass complete, probably for the first time to the big tight end, it seems. After a couple Cougars wrap up, Braden Botterwack after he's into Cougar territory. Boy, they just moved that. That looked like an easy play to get, too. Looks like they got that first down with no problems. Certainly a little momentum swinging on the side of the Railers now. One play into that drive. Ball, as you mentioned, into Cougar territory on the 45. Maybe a 46-yard line. Another Bank, pump fake. And, and he's a got throw. a man. Has a he's man. got a man. Beats Tayon McDaniel. And Xavion Martin's just going to take the rest. And I think... Tayon McDaniel may have just gotten cross-footed around, just not sure which way to turn and run to try and cover that throw. And Xavion Martin just basically fields a can of corn out in right field 
and then just takes the ball the rest of the way for the touchdown. And again, it's the long pass. Kick up and good. And just like that, they're back in it. Railers cut it to seven yet again with six minutes, 11 seconds left before the break. Yeah, it does seem like just two minutes ago we were talking about the Cougars yeah. maybe able to blow this game open just a tad. But the other part of this whole thing is that they, th th those defensive backs are continuously letting someone get behind them. Mm -hmm. That is a big no-no. Mm -hmm. You've got to keep them in front of you. I want to say the defensive line for the Cougars, especially on those pass plays, has been getting good pressure or at least getting Schmidt sometimes out of the pocket most plays. It's just there's just enough protection to get some separation of the Railer receivers against the Cougars secondary. And some good throws by Ben Schmidt, the quarterback, senior quarterback for the Railers. And certainly have put the only thing keeping the Railers in this game is that arm. That's it. The long ball. Kick will be bounced back that time fielded by Jarrett Pittenger. Really just a smart play. Was going to let it bounce to have Jackson Hayes go, but it did take a bounce back towards the Newton line. It was lucky to get on that before a railer got on top of it. The ball will be on the right hash of the 20-yard line as the Cougars will head north yet again. Our score, 21-14, Cougars over the Railers, 6.09 left before the break. Cougars again will line up two receivers each side. Going to have Jackson Hayes in motion, but this time going to be a handoff Hand to off. Owen Bully. Ball Bumble. comes loose, but I believe that play is blown dead. Play was blown dead before wow. the ball came out. Wow, that was very close. Loss of two for the Cougars. And the Railers seem to have some spark under them right now. Going to be a quick throw. Zachary Davidson going to be met He's right going there. He's nowhere. And that was Ben Crawford wraps up Davidson. And one thing I've noticed about the defenders for Newton, very high tackles. Yeah. Seen multiple yeah. <laughs> Railers almost just fall on top of some Cougars. And Cer grabbing them by the head. Right, and the shoulder pad. Bring up third and nine. Free's going to look right side for Schreiber. Oh. Ball tipped. Tipped. Incomplete. Wow. Remsburg had a chance at it off the tip. Looked like they were looking for Colin Schreiber, and you will see that first punt of the night for the Cougars. Cougars will have only had the ball for one minute as 5.09 is on the clock now. And we're going to have the quarterback as the punter here. That's what I wanted to see. Who was punting? And kind oh, of a line drive a really over in kind of punt. Fielded that time by Rensburg, and he'll be wrapped up right there by Tejon McDaniel. But they do get the ball in Cougar territory on the 48-yard line. I've seen games turn fast, but I feel like this may be one of the fastest turns of momentum in a game that I've seen. Yes, it has been. Because of the big plays that the Railers have had recently, especially over the air, we are maybe only a few plays away from a tie ball game. And Railers certainly looking like they're going to spread it 
tight end left side. And they will run it with Forrest on the Good right one. side. Whoa. Lowers the shoulder and he's still, yeah. over Luke Simpson and able to get a few more yards out of it. Powerful run there by Forrest. Picking up six yards. Again, I, it feels like they want to keep running it to set up those big pass plays, but really just depends on how many more runs are you going to have to go to set up that big play. It looks like they're being old, like very conservative to continually bring the Cougars inside. Forrest again okay. going to run it, run it, but that time wrapped up by Case and Dietz. And that'll bring up a third and one. And you could perhaps maybe, you know, certainly I'm not a head coach, but I wonder if this is an area to take a shot into the end zone. I mean, you're looking certainly at a two down territory at this point. Incomplete pass would make it fourth and a long one. Yeah. You could see a shot taken here. Looks like they're crowding the line. They, they are going to crowd out it. They're going to throw it. That time is going to be the tight end and will get swung oh. out of bounds there by Owen Bully. Certainly easily has the first down and about 10 yards more. That's going to be Botterweck. So just a little out route at the line of scrimmage by the tight end. Picks up around 12 yards. Ball on the 26 now of the Cougars. They're crowding Railers, them out. No, they're backing out. Railers oh, marching, he, and you're going to get an offsides over. here. Jarrett Pittenger steps just a little too far, and that's going to give five more yards for the Railers. First and five for the Railers. Handoff, Forrest again. Left oh, side gets breaks. through to the 10-5. Oh, Easy run down. in for Kenyon Forrest. And we are an extra point away from having a tie ball game. Wow. Here at Salina Stadium. Wow. And if you kind of look down at the... Cougar sideline, it kind of doesn't it doesn't have that same energy that it had earlier. And extra point is good. good, even though there were about three Cougars there that I thought was going to be able to block it. And just like that, we are all knotted up at 21 with 3 minutes, 28 seconds before the break. Wow. And I don't mean this to say mean, but it seemed like the Railers have finally arrived off the bus. Uh, yeah, I, 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 we have an un, unexpected momentum change, I would call it. Hirschberger is going to kick it off yet again. This is going to be to Whitaker and Jackson Hayes. That kick, kick is going to bounce bounds. out of bounds. It will give the Cougars the ball on the 35-yard line. And really, when you look back, I think we're going to say, and Grant, we still have three minutes, 28 seconds left. When we think about 
Really just the control of this game. Cougars have certainly controlled 85% of this game, you can say. But it's the scoreboard doesn't dictate. Certainly. Davidson in motion, going to throw out to Schreiber. Yeah, and he's going to be hit a couple of times, then swung back. up and swallowed up that time by Joe Schletka of the Railers. That will be a loss of one. Cougar is going to line it up quick yet again. Empty backfield. Back to pass. As man in his face, Freeze going to throw high for Jackson Hayes and way to get up the ladder and bring that down. Boy, that's going to be real close to a first down. I think he's going to be a couple yards shy, uh, maybe one yard shy. But we'll bring up, yeah, third and one. And they're still going to stay empty backfield. Free is going to look over the middle. Got it, got Davidson. Pass wow. complete. And he dropped the ball. Ball comes out. I don't know if it hit the ground. No, there, and there's, they're running there's with no it. whistle. And that ball. <laughs> wow. Unbelievable. Wow. Lou Boston again coming up big on the defense. Wow. For the Railers. And I'll be really interested to watch. That play in post as, wow. I don't think, I mean, it was a great reception by Davidson going up and getting it. And then either the ball just got ripped out or. Well, it got not. ripped out. It so totally certainly got ripped out. Certainly did, but I couldn't see if the ball hit the ground or not, which I don't think it did. I think it just started rolling around a bunch of railers and Luke Boston came up with it. But the Railers with the ball on their own 45-yard line. Another turnover by the offense of the Cougars. And there's going to be Forrest this time running. Give him a couple yards. Slew of Cougars bringing him down. So far by my count, we're looking at four Cougar turnovers in the first half. Second nine, two fifteen and counting on the clock before break. Wow. They've Rails. got a hold of right now. Oh, he's going to pull out. it down. Going to throw the over man. the middle. Ooh. Had a wide open receiver of Avery Dutcher. But just low, easily would have had a first down ball into Cougar territory around the 40-yard line. Wow. But just a great bootleg fake there by Schmidt, getting a lot of Cougars to bite on Forrest. But we'll bring up third and nine. And we'll see if we have maybe a – not sure if they have enough time, but could see a hard count here by Schmidt. They're going to box up their receivers. A couple of Newton coaches yelling at his players again. He rolls Schmidt out. Going to take it down. Going to throw it back this oh time. Oh, my. It's As wide Boris open. Wide open and shoved out by Owen Bully. Wow. And we have a Cougar down, and that's Q Hill down on the opposite end of the field. Coach is attending to him. And really, I think that was just a great play call. I mean, when you're getting the Cougars on their heels, you're trying to, you're almost getting some of the Cougars to overshoot at this point, trying to make plays. And when that happens, you start leaving your assignments and you leave guys like important players like Kenyon Forrest wide open on the short side of the field for a big gain. Owen Bully was the one to shove him out. Just under two minutes before half. 
Wow. And Railers again going to line up in that three receiver formation at the top of your screen. Kind of bunched up. There Forrest, they go. First down. Man, shoved out of bounds after a gain of 13. Ball now on the 12-yard line of the Cougars. And really, as I mentioned earlier in this game, Forrest with not very many yards has been easily getting yards in this second quarter. And really, yeah, Railers like just they're opening up. Gonna pull it down. Schmidt and over the and middle. He's got a man. Pass complete reaches for the end zone. Touchdown. They are gonna rule it a touchdown. Just that quick, they have taken the lead over the Salina South Cougars. Peyton Maxwell got the touchdown. There wasn't necessarily an official right there at the goal line to see. So a little bit of a late call by the official standing in the end zone. But they do give it to him. Hirschberger on to make it 28. And we're going to get maybe an offsides Bye. here as a few Cougars got pretty anxious. Now, this is interesting to see. Now, we have a few. Oh, they are going to rule it a false start. I was looking at a few railers, especially like Xavion Martin. Moving. And Maxwell, no, on the sideline for the Railers coming almost onto the field, expecting that to be an offsides, and then giving, maybe attempting to go for a two-point conversion with that little extra yardage. It's but up. the false start will back him up. Good. And that kick will be good. So the false start doesn't hurt him. Not at all. But just like that, Railers lead 28-21. Over the Cougars with one minute, 41 seconds left. Cougars going to get the ball back. They do have all three timeouts. This is going to be an important drive as the Railers do get the ball to start the second half. Certainly some storylines would be just how well the defense played first I'd say maybe quarter and a fourth of this game until Newton really kind of woke up and started taking advantage of the Cougars and then also the Cougars with four first half turnovers on offense yeah three three interceptions by Weston Freeze one can certainly be attributed to a pretty good turnover you could say as the interception yeah. One of them, but then another fumble by Zachary Davidson turned the ball over at a key moment and led the Railers to that score. Hirschberg kicks it away. Fielded by Kenyon. He goes nowhere. Nowhere at all. Excuse me. Kyron Whitaker for the Cougars was on that reception. And he's going to be hit at the 16-yard line. Pretty important series here for the Cougars. Definitely Certainly. important. They will start the drive five wide. And the three receivers at the top Back of your the screen. Pass. Bree's going to step up. up. He's got to Going to load for Schreiber. Oh. And really was seemingly to fight oh, wow. with the defender 43. But then really not it almost seemed like he stopped on the route he did stop to on get the route. kind of man up with that defender but then by the time he manned up with the defender he really just stopped short of where the ball was going to land bring up second and 10 the three receivers now will be at the bottom of your screen throw over the middle gotcha. Kenyon Martin able to keep his eyes in front of it pass complete he's short on the for the first down 
Looks like it's going to be about two yards short of the first. And Newton will take their second timeout before a third and two. Certainly the Railers rolling right now. Look like they want the ball back. If their defense can get a stop here on third and two. And this is where they took it in the last time, so they definitely need to get this first down. Certainly just the energy from the sidelines and on the field in the way of the Railers. Simpson going to line up and, uh, as the slot of Bullier go, go. is going to run up. Easily has first down yardage and more. Going to be and out across still the plenty 40. plenty of time. With the Cougars, do have all three timeouts. Well, there's plenty of time. Certainly helped out by that timeout by the Railers there. Clock counting at 115. Freeze going to roll left side. And will take off and run. Going to go back one. But we have a flag coming in in the far backfield freeze almost had the first down before that flag came in it is holding i think it's certainly going to be a hold <laughs> nick arias is going to be tacked with that holding and it did seem to happen in the backfield, so back him up even farther than just 10 yards. First and 24. And if you're the Cougars, we'll see if they still continue to try and hurry this up. Hayes going to go in the backfield. They're going to throw Swing it out it to out. him. He's caught, caught it. it. And will be inbounds at around the 30-yard line. We'll see what the Cougars decide to do. No timeout yet. And 40 seconds and counting left before halftime. And Cougars may be making some very safe plays here, but Free is going to take a shot down the field for Schreiber into double coverage and a good play there by the Railer defense. He had two men on him. I, I don't know if you don't go the other way. There. Joe Schletka with a nice bat away there. That'll bring up third and pretty long. Mark it 22 yards. 25 seconds left. Cougar's going to stay five wide again, but Free's going to have men step up, trying to find Davidson on the run, but just throws too far out in front of him. Had him for some yards to at least get back to the original line of scrimmage, but that'll stop the clock with 21 seconds. And you're really needing a good punt here by your quarterback because anything maybe around midfield could set, even with 21 seconds and one timeout, could set up that big pass play for the Railers as they can certainly strike quick if we, as we've seen in this quarter. Bit of a low snap freeze Punt. gets it away. He's going to bounce at least once before fielded. Spins oh, he's off of away. Owen Bully, but Owen Bully comes back to make the tackle. Ben Reyes for the Railers gets a few yards back off the return, but with 10 seconds left, we'll see if the Railers decide to push their luck. They do get the ball at the break. So we could even just see a kneel down here. Cougars will go into the half with all three timeouts and trailing. And Schmidt in the offense will line up with four receivers wide. With the 10 seconds left, we'll see if it's just a run, but no, he's going to take it back. It's a gonna long pass. Lock deep. Going to try and find Martin, or excuse me, Maxwell, pass complete. Beats wow. Jackson Hayes. And calls timeout. 
Wow. Beat Jackson Hayes and beat Creighton Modro out there. And I think we're going to look at, with three seconds left, we're going to see a, a Hail Mary here. And really, from what we've seen in the secondary for the Cougars so far, I'd be pretty worried about this ball going into the end zone right now. Even just shown on that pass right there, it looks like... That's the least thing that they need right now, being down seven points. Based on that throw that Ben Schmidt just threw, I think he might be able to get this 34 yards into the end zone for a chance. And if not, you could see something like a hook and ladder, perhaps. Cougar's going to put Colin Schreiber on defense, going to put him at the back of the end zone or close to around maybe the five-yard line. Also, Owen Bully is going to be standing on the 10. Jackson Hayes as well. Roll it out. Here we go. The final play, barring a penalty. Ben Schmidt going to throw it. Pass oh. will be incomplete. And even if he caught it, that's going to be out of bounds. But that will bring us to the end of the first half. A surprising comeback by the Railers as they lead 28-21 over the Cougars. We'll be back with some halftime thoughts right after this. Hello and welcome to the Slimy Connection Halftime Show. Again, our halftime score, Cougars 28, excuse me, Railers 28, Cougars 21. Again, we kind of mentioned it in the broadcast a little bit. Kind of the story of that first half was the Cougar defense, but then that Railer offense really woke up. And I, I think once I begin to speak that how well the Cougar defense was playing, it was over the top and they score. The next thing you know, they're coming back and they're scoring. There's no way that the Cougar defense should have let them score all these points. Again, just seemed to be most of the game they had uh, Kenyon Forrest, the running back number 21 for the Railers, constantly running. But then after they decided to finally start throwing the long ball, they really just saw a lot of success. Cougars just couldn't defend that at all. That really led to the 28 points so far. So far also on the Cougar offensive side, that four turnovers, including three interceptions by quarterback Weston Freeze and another fumble by Zachary Davidson. What has really been the key for the defense of Newton to really get those turnovers? Well, I don't think it's been the key for their defense. I think that South is just making mistakes. I mean, when you're running and you let the ball, you don't have a tight grip on the ball and they take it out of there. I don't really think it's all that much of a defensive thing. Railers do get the ball to start the second half after a huge just swing in the middle of that second quarter. See if the Cougars can come out with a little bit of fire and get a turnover or two, get back in this game. Well, that'll be the Slime Me Connection Halftime Show. We'll be back for the second half right after this. Hello and welcome back to the start of the second half between the Cougars and Railers. Again, our score, 28-21 Railers. The Railers with an explosive end to the second quarter and do lead it by a touchdown, and they do get the ball to start this half of play. It's getting pretty chilly out here on a mid-October night here in Salina. Finally starting to see some jackets outside a few blankets at the same time it's true it should seem pretty comfy right now Caden Budkey will kick us off again again Peyton Maxwell standing on his own 10 yard line and that's going to be a shorter kick, but this is going to be blown dead before fielded by Remsburg. We may have one of an offsides. Maybe a Cougar was across the line. Usually that's not a blown dead play, but it is going to be an offsides. Yep. 
So back him up five yards, but he's going to have to kick it again. Railer is certainly covering the corners, so if that ball kind of nears the out of bounds, there's certainly a man there to grab it. it I, seems like where I Bucky think was we'll looking. find out what they're made of right now. And this time they try and kick it to the left side, and that's going to bounce out of bounds. And they're going to get the ball, I still believe, on the 35. Yep. So really they were just given five extra yards, so... Yeah, it looks like they're going to maybe mark the ball at the 40-yard line just because of that five-yard extra penalty. That was what I was curious about, and that looks oh, like where the they're going. Oh, the five yards that they got at the beginning. Right, so they wouldn't, it would normally be the 35. They're going to give it the 40 because I was very curious because, I mean, you could just easily kick it out and you'd get that. But Ben Schmidt and Martin again going to – excuse me, Forrest again going to take over. And Force is going to get that first down run up the middle. Powerful run. Picking up six on first down. The Cougars have got to figure out what these Railers are doing and shut it down and shut it down in a hurry. And it certainly looked like they figured it out. I mean, the first, well, the first 14, 16 minutes of this game. They're going to run that same bunch, three yep. receiver bunch close to the line of scrimmage. And that no time it's going to be a handoff, Martin, and they do bottle that one up. And before he is shoved back and tackled, we'll bring up third and four. And that's what they were doing in the first quarter. Trey Berlin seems to be in on that tackle there. And we'll see if we see another run, or we'll see if uh, Railers will pass for the first time this drive. It's a pass. It will be a pass. Looking left side, down for trying to find Dutcher. Q Hill in on coverage, and the pass will be incomplete. They'll bring up fourth down. First down will be had at the 50-yard line, but four yards for the Railers to get there. They're going for it. Or are they going for it? Going to have some personnel. Maxwell and Dutcher are going to switch sides of the field. This may be a pooch uh -oh. kick. And if you're the Cougars, you certainly don't want to jump off here. No, but you would Still love to get Still 10 seconds. Maybe you could get a hard count. There was, oh, there was the hard count. Didn't get him to jump. Five on the play clock. Do you get it snapped away? They will punt it. It's going to be a skyrocket. And with wow, nobody back for the Cougars, it's going to bounce a little bit back for the Cougars and be downed. Pretty good punt that was there. A good punt. That was a pretty good punt. Nobody back for the Cougars. And especially when you're in that moment, you don't necessarily want to send anybody back when your offense is lining up in a formation because you'd basically be taking one of your defenders out of the play. Right. And he had good hang time on that. That kicking it high gives it good hang time. Time for your man to get down the field. And got it inside the 20-yard line of the Cougars. And ball be at the 17-yard line. Freeze and Bully will take over. And it looks like Luke Simpson's going to come out on the field late with still lined up now 10 on the play clock. And do get it away. First now to run, Luke Simpson and the gang no way. not going to be getting much. Maybe lost a couple. Going to officially be a loss of one. Second and 11 now, Cougar's going to line it up quick again. We'll snap it again quick and a look. The side finds Colin Schreiber for yeah, a nice completion. No, he's a little bit short. 
I think he's going to be a good maybe five Four yards yard. short. Bring up third and six. Going to run the option pitch out. Bully going to cut it up. Oh, and they're right and there. Going to maybe only get a few yards, but still going to be another few yards short of the first. Needed six, picked up three. Second. Yeah, it should oh, be. Why they got second over uh, there? It should be fourth down. I don't think they moved it. There he goes. The last play. They're going to go for it here on fourth. Going to look. Schreiber, nice catch. Spins out First a one. Down. down the line. Going to cut it back inside. Switches hands. And he's got the ball out across the 45-yard line of the Railers. Clutch play there by Colin Schreiber. Nice throw as well by Weston Freeze. Cougars going to line up quick. When you least expect it, Schreiber will catch it. And Schreiber is just looking Second, at the sideline. <laughs> well, he doesn't realize, know what's going on. Doesn't realize the play happened. Well, he and didn't know anything went on, did he? Yeah, I, I, the play just happened. <laughs> Schreiber, luckily, the play wasn't run to his side. But just didn't realize. I don't know if the uh, this ball was not needing to be snapped. That's going to be a pitch out to Bully. And he's he's going to get the corner. And he's going to be out of bounds, close to the 20-yard line of the Railers. Going to mark him out to 22. Cougars have something rolling here. That could have been a late hit. <laughs> That's Jarrett Pittenger now and a running back for Bully. Luke Simpson's going to be the slot man on the right side. Colin Schreiber at the top of your screen. Then Zachary Davidson and Zach, excuse me, Jackson Hayes. We're going to be at the top now. Jackson Hayes going to move from the top to the bottom of the formation. That's going to be a handoff. Jarrett Pittenger gets some blocks out in front to the ten yard line. Another high tackle by number ten of the Railers. Now ben he's Reyes. Rolling. And we've got a first and goal now. Ball on the nine yard line. So far, this has been a good response from the Cougars. Pittenger with the ball yet again just gets tripped up. Will gain a yard on that play. Had some running room, but seemed like he just got clipped by a railer there. And they're all over sideline already motioning for a bully to be back out on the field. They're going to bring Zachary Davidson off. Jackson Hayes will be on. Luke Simpson's going to be that slot man as well. Get another counter play, oh, but just going to be hit in the backfield. Denham Nelson came in there and hit the running back, and that had nowhere to go. Nowhere. A couple, couple yells from the Cougar, uh, excuse me, the Cougar fans saying you got a block. That's going to bring up third and eleven. And goal from the 11. Throw over no, the middle. Jackson good. Hayes. Touchdown, Cougars. Good pass. Good catch. And we got a touchdown. And that's just a great response that the Cougars need, not only just to the drive, but a couple negative plays back to back on that end goal when they first got to the goal line. And just a great rebound there to get that play into the end zone. A nice throw and catch. And they needed that to tie this game up. Bud Key with the extra point is good. And we have a tie ball game at 28 all. Seven minutes, eight seconds left in the third quarter. And the Cougars certainly responded, came out and got that stop on defense. And then the offense moved down the field and got the score. Especially the big run from Owen Bully and a Colin Schreiber reception led the Cougars down the field. And they're still talking about it here on the 
10 yard line, four of the officials are still chatting about something. Not sure if we're gonna get a call here or not. Doesn't look like we will. No. Now the Cougar defense has got to stand tall right now. They cannot afford to let the Railers come right. back and Kick's score. It's going to be Xavion Martin is going to field it. And we'll dance a little bit and get it out to around the 34-yard line. The Railers will start their second drive of the second half. Didn't really, have, that's pretty good field position. Didn't have too much going on the first drive. <laughs> ben Schmidt, Kenyon Forrest again in the backfield. Forrest on the left side of Schmidt and three receivers at the bottom of the formation. That's going to be a handoff hey. Schmidt to the weak side, and he's going to lay a truck stick into Q Hill before squirting out of bounds. And be five yard gain. It seemed like he maybe got a little bit more, but they must have stepped out of bounds before that. Before that. And they're going to line up same formation, same layout as before. Second and five. Going to be pulled Pass. by Schmidt. Going to try and find Maxwell. And that's going to be incomplete. Could have maybe had a little bit of interference. Some contact down there with A.J. Johnson, but no call. Well, that's And the there same. is a flag, though, at the line of scrimmage. And it looks like it may be something in regards to a it face mask, maybe on the railers. And now uh, just a hold. Brandon Fletcher hobbling just a little bit coming off the field for the Cougars. After that penalty, it brings up second 15 for the Railers. Again, going to stay in that same formation. Schmidt going to be back. He's back Has to pass. Has and he's got a wide, wide open. Man. And not going to catch him. Touchdown, Railers. Wow. Carter Kirby dove at Forrest, but was not able to get him. And I think that was going to be the only shot because Forrest was going to outrun him. They cannot continue to let him get behind them. When you let a man get behind you, don't you know that's almost a guarantee for a score? Especially when the passes are put on the mark like those are. Kenyon Forrest was just kind of wide open over the middle of the field again, snuck out there. And it's not the first time. Kick is up and good. And just like that, Railers Back retake the seven. lead. Yeah, the bad thing is that's that's not the first time. That's not the second time. It's not even the third time. Yep. I think we've seen if even the Cougars do kind of, I guess, take some men out of the box to drop some more in coverage on those plays. Some of those play action reads are really going to burn the Cougars because if you drop, try to put more men in the secondary, they're just going to continually run that ball with Martin, or excuse me, uh, Forrest. Yeah, that's the, the issue is the men cannot, the defensive backs cannot let anybody get behind them, period. 
6.42 left in the third quarter. Railers retake the lead and lead by seven. Railers with five touchdowns so far. Cougars only with four. Hirschberger will kick it off. Pretty good kick. It's going to be fielded by Whitaker on the five. Going to have some open good. running lanes. Going to almost get through a couple of railers, but get the ball out to the 29-yard line. It's a good return there. Kyron Whitaker, just a sophomore, listed at 5'11", may have maybe seeing him at the receiver position in the return game more in the coming years. Now the Cougars have got to come back and score again. Right now. And first down run Whoa. to Jarrett Pittenger is blown up. Nick Antonowicz comes through and really hits Pittenger for maybe no gain on the play, but there were other railers in the backfield that could have created that play for a loss. Bring up second 10, run the option, pitch it really quick. Nowhere. And really pitched it too soon. 65. I believe it was for the Railers really was the read key for Weston Freeze and Weston Freeze just pitched it right to Pittenger and 65 just went from Freeze over to Pittenger and just made the tackle. I feel like maybe those plays you have to run at your read key a little bit more but on a third and long Freeze Going to throw over his cross his body, finds Jackson Hayes, has first down, going to cut it back. If he can get some blocks, can maybe take it all the way. Davidson going to cut it back yet again. Dan, and he's going to be horse collar tackled inside the five. And there's a flag on the play. Good thing Jackson Hayes able to get up quickly after that horse collar tackle. Seemed to have his legs curled up underneath him. And this is just what the doctor ordered. Take the ball down the field. Huge play. They had the ball on their 21-yard line, and now they're on their own 21. Now they're on the five-yard line, maybe now two-and-a-half-yard line of the Railers. So Weston Freeze. And Jackson Hayes certainly gathering the passing yards and reception yards. And that was really an impressive run of Jackson Hayes just seeing some lanes and getting through. But drive not over yet. Cougars still have to punch this in. Jarrett Pittenger for the touchdown. Jared Pittenger from two yards out. And they needed that. Makes it a one-point game. And the Good. equalizer is good you said the Cougars needed to answer after a couple plays didn't seem like they were going to but a big play from Freeze to Jackson Hayes and one play later they're they, in they tie it up 5 minutes 12 seconds left in our third quarter of play be seeing a back and forth game here but really it's maybe too early to say whoever gets the ball last wins it's kind of funny how you said that at the beginning of this game mm -hmm. 
I sure didn't see it going that way, though, after the first quarter. I would still say you may be more confident, though, as on the Railer sideline, as even though South can get forward and get some points at the same time, the Railers are still able to score really quickly with the Cougars no real answer in that secondary, in that passing game. It's going to be a squib kick. It's going to be fielded by a Railer at the 39-yard line. That'll be Jake Schmidt. Now that defense has got to stand tall right now. And they can't afford to let them get over the top. First and 10 railers on their own 39. That's going to be a handoff forest and will be brought down. Ball came Bump. loose. They, I do uh, think oh, he they was are down. Really dead. I think he was down. Case and Dietz in on the tackle there of Forrest after Forrest picks up four yards. Second and six. Forrest again has a little bit of an edge. Trickles down the sideline, out of bounds. Has the first down. Move the chains into Cougar territory. Come on. And thinking about even just on the opposite side of the ball, Jarrett Pittenger coming in big for the Cougars. That running back allows Owen Bully to get a little bit of a rest and be fresh on defense at that safety position. But he's still got to go in on defense, too, so. That is true. Make, oh, see, wow. Again, they do Forrest. Side. Gonna pick up another six yards before he's tripped up. And, and the funny thing is they knew which way he was going because if you didn't notice, the defense overloaded on this side. And give him more than six. You have him about eight. And really, some, even though they even got only eight, had a wide open hole to get through. The thing about the wide a hole is he's had the last couple of plays, he'd be getting more th than what he's gotten. Oh, look, That's gonna be another one up the middle. Pile just keeps First going down. forward. And really it seemed there was Several Cougars there, one even being Carter Kirby and a pile of others. And the pile just kept moving in the way of the railers. And you know what they're setting up? They're bringing, they're going to have to bring the deep because they're running so well. They'll have to bring those uh, defensive backs up. And when they do, they go over the top. One person I'd look out for right now, Braden Botterweck. It's going to be the tight end on the left side. They've hit him over the middle a few times, but it will be another run. And it looked like it might have been a hold. I would have personally thought it might have been a hold on number 81 as he really just took the defensive end there and just wrapped around him and threw him to the ground. But nevertheless, a two-yard gain for Forrest. All tied up here, 235 left to go in the third. Schmidt handoff again for us. This time not going to go oh. anywhere. Trey Berland in there. First Looked to like make they contact. Were trying to strip the ball at the same time. We'll get no gain on the play. Newton 
certainly using a bit more clock here than they usually do on their drives. And it feels like we're just kind of waiting and waiting and waiting for that big pass play to come out. Well, as they draw them in with their run, yep. they make them come up and over the top they go. Butterwack going to be inside. But and he has a man open in the end zone, finds him. Q Hill able to get flag. back, but they're going to throw a pass interference on him in the end zone. I didn't see much there. I thought I've seen more egregious pass interferences tonight that haven't been called. Yes. They think they were looking for Xavion Martin there in the end zone around the end of the Mustang. Q Hill comes up a little wobbly after that. And again, Schmidt had him open, had a good five, six, seven yards on Q Hill, and if just throws it a little more out in front, has an easy touchdown, but the little bit shorter throw allowed Q Hill to get back into the play, and sometimes when your defender is catching up, that is what kind of constitutes a pass interference, as usually a defender will run in to the receiver on that play. Still didn't look like there was much there, though. Not as much as we've seen earlier tonight. Railers now have the ball on the Cougars 16. And maybe expect a run back to Forrest here. And that's and where they go. Oh, it's going to be no, a keeper bang. by Schmidt. And he's and he's going to be not touched. The first, it seems, and then correct me if that's I'm wrong. That's a good fake. That seemed to be the first pull of the night that wasn't followed up by a throw yeah. by Ben Schmidt showing off the speed and the redirection to run away from Cougar defenders wasn't touched into the end zone extra point away from taking another touchdown lead and that kick is up and good Railers now respond with a touchdown. And back and forth we go. 132 left before the fourth quarter. 42-35. Charles, you're shaking your head. I, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. And, and it's not like they don't know what's... It's not like they don't know what's getting ready to take place. It's been run, 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 pass. Then he pulls it out, and not only does he not go around the end, he goes right up the middle. Yeah. What's that? What that tells me is people ain't staying at home. And... You know, again, I don't have the film in front of me, but it seemed like there were two men that were tackling Kenyon Forrest in that play, and it makes me just wonder if that other Cougar who was there was actually responsible for Ben Schmidt on that play and really just read both of them and just ran the rest of the way. And that kick is going to go out the end of the end zone by Hirschberger. Cougars will get it on the 20. They've got to score again. That seems to be what's keeping just the Cougars alive just barely as their offense able to get some big plays when they need it. Yes, because it's definitely not the defense. <laughs> yeah, especially when we were talking about the first 45 minutes of this game, we were talking about how well the defense was playing. Yes. And being kind of an unsung hero. Free is going to pull it and just going to be wrapped up and driven backwards. Pushed back even all the way to his own end zone. Stood up. Number 58 there. Not on the chart, unfortunately. And they're going to officially mark him for maybe around a seven-yard loss. 
Wow. Maybe make it eight now. Second 18, fine That's Schreiber. Nice ball placement from Freeze. Nick and Tunnelwich and Ben Reyes were there. At least they make the it a, a makeable third yeah. down. You lose eight, you gain 16, make it third and two. Bully going to be run. Has some running lanes. Can he get by one? No. But even just a little bit extra block there out on the edge and just might have been enough to spring Owen Bully even a little bit more. But does get the ball one shot, one yard shy of midfield. Jarrett Pittenger would now back into the game at running back. Pittenger with the ball. And maybe a little bit of a horse collar looking for a flag not thrown. And in a way, Boy. it seemed that he may have released on that. And that's maybe the only thing I'm thinking about where they could have not thrown it. The fans are not gr agreeing with you. They are not, but I'm wondering if he released just enough to get it. Hand off again. But number 55 coming out on the edge. Dylan McBee for the Railers stops that play for no gain. And that should be the final play of the third quarter. Rattlers, 40, excuse me, Rattlers. Rat Railers, <laughs> I can't read all of a sudden. Railers, 42. Cougars, 35. As we enter the final quarter of play, we'll be back with that quarter right after this. Hi, I'm Nathan Wilkham, manager at the Longhorn Steakhouse here in Salina, Kansas. We are proud supporters of our local high school sports team and our community. I'd like to invite you to join us for a great meal at Longhorn Steakhouse. We are open Sunday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m., and Friday and Saturday from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. We hope to see you at our restaurant, and when you do, ask for me or our managing partner, Sarah Grimes. We'd love to say hello. And welcome back to the final quarter of play. Again, Cougar is down... 42-35 to the Railers. They'll bring up fourth down. Offense going to stay out on the field. And really how this game's going, you you not necessarily have to go for it, but you also have to pick this up. Yeah, if fourth, you're going for it, you definitely got to pick it up. Fourth and six at a crucial point in the game. Freeze going to throw. Intercepted. Dayon Nelson cuts the route. And intercepts it. I mean. Kind of got the ball around the same area. Could have yeah. easily batted it down. But another turnover and another interception, the fourth on the night of Weston Freeze. Ben Schmidt and Jan Forrest again. Here comes Forrest running right side, uh, cuts it through, and Down just it, squirting through a high tackle. Luke Simpson finally brings down Kenyon Forrest after he runs about a good 20 yards. And they should have had him in the backfield, but the problem is they're not wrapping up and tackling. 
There's no way he should have got that first down. Raylers with the ball on the 33-yard line now of the Cougars. And Kenyon going to take Whoa. it this time, but going to be met by a few Cougars there. Brandon Fletcher looks like on the field, and it looks like that might be Trey Berland on the ground, holding his maybe right knee. Able to stand up pretty quickly, so maybe just a stinger. Stinger. As him and Fletcher were the two to wrap up. Kenyon Forrest. Going to lose a yard on that play. Second and 11 now for the offense of the Railers. Official waving his arms to start the clock. There it finally goes. And as the spear oh, comes on, Schmidt throws end zone. Whoa. And incomplete. And it looks like Peyton Maxwell and Avery Dutcher ran the same route. And really just got crossed up with each other. Should have been a reception, but they were both there. Really, I it mean, seemed like Dutcher was the one to come try and come down with the ball, but then Maxwell hit him, and the ball came loose for an incomplete pass. And I think that's just some miscommunication on where who needed to be where. The thing is, they were both open. <laughs> that's the bad thing. Q Hill running, trying to get set up. Man comes, Schmidt launches, end zone to A.J. Johnson. And good coverage there. A.J. Johnson's helmet comes off. He may have, probably going to have to come out, certainly. And Creighton Modro going to come on the field for A.J. Johnson, at least for a play. I'll bring up fourth down, and certainly if I were the Railers, I'd look for where number 15, who just came in for the Cougars, is, and I'd put your <laughs> guy on him and try and throw it up top. Certainly. Modro listed only at 5'9". He's back to Schmidt pass. going to throw high, incomplete, trying to find... Dutcher, and there's that stand by the Cougar defense you needed to get the turnover on downs. Now, what will the Cougars do with it? And I think we're seeing a little bit of Luke Hirsch talking a little smack with Colin Schreiber at the bottom of your screen. It's going to be a handoff. Owen Bully has some running lanes. Going to try and lower his shoulder. But Joe Schletka just got a little lower, but not before Bully picks up nine. Second down and nine. We'll see what the Cougars decide to do. Going to run option. Bully gets it. Nice block by Jackson it. Hayes. He fumbled. And it looks like the Railers recover. Another turnover. Make it six on the night by the Cougar offense. And certainly some of that can be a little skewed as some happened on fourth downs. But the record book will come down so far to four interceptions, two lost fumbles. Railers 
if anything, maybe just got some more yards to burn a little bit more clock. That will line up with three receivers. Bottom of your screen, I expect a run, read. Kenyon Forrest here. We'll see what they do. A little bit of a high snap. Gets it down to Forrest just in time as it seemed like Forrest was kind of bobbling it as well. Yeah. Schmidt had to lower that ball quick to get it into Forrest's arms, and they're lucky not to turn it over in that instance. Uh, the Sal Salina South Cougars have not been fortunate enough to have those kind of turnovers like they've been given up tonight. Second and 11, Railers in no immediate hurry to snap this. 10 on the play clock. Davion Martin will be at the bottom of your screen. Launch it with, uh, excuse me, snap it with just zero on the play clock. They do find Xavion Martin, gets by Jackson Hayes, and then swung around. By A.J. Johnson. <laughs> I think he did a full dance maneuver there, swung him around, maybe a good 360, maybe a little bit more before he's out of bounds. That is A.J. Johnson that got him, but not before a first down is achieved for the Railers. Ball officially into Cougar territory on the 49-yard line. Looks like they're... Drew Nelson was kind of crowding the line before he backed off. Now he's going to go. They got him. Try and get Kenyon Forrest. Gets around. And Kenyon Forrest just lucky. They I would almost say to get a line of scrimmage, but it yeah. looks like he's picking up two on that play. And they had him in the backfield. That's where they got to wrap up. Wrap up and take him down. Second and eight. Clock stopped at 9.07 left in the game. Railers still lead by a touchdown, 42-35. It's going to be a handoff. Forrest He's going to be nowhere. met right at the line of scrimmage. Just seemed to kind of run into one of the Cougar defenders that was being blocked. Officially give him a yard and bring up third and seven. Both teams still with all of their timeouts. We're going to be very crucial down the stretch here. They need to hold him on this third down. Carter Kirby coming off the field, limping just a little bit. Change on McDaniel. Now we'll be back in at around the linebacker position. Q Hill going to move across the field. On. Schmidt launches. And oh. that should be offensive pass interference, and that's that's what? one of the easiest calls you're gonna get. There's no flag. They threw a flag. There is a flag. Oh, it's okay. it's around the 19 yard line. Oh, okay. Certainly, Jackson Hayes was trying to get under that, and the only thing the receiver <laughs> that might have been Xavion Martin for. The Railers could do, and maybe just a smart play yeah. in general because it keeps the ball on your side, was really just to shove Jackson Hayes. Smart play by the senior there. And, no, that was actually Avery Dutcher they ruled that well, on. Wasn't that on – was that, that third was down? I thought that was third down. That is going to, they're going to replay third down now. I'm not so sure I would have took that. That gives them two plays. Yeah, because that would have been fourth. Right. In that instance. Nevertheless, third and 22. For the Railers. Schmidt, Cougars only going to rush three. Going to step up, throw on the run. And completes to Xavion Martin. And it's going to bring up a fourth and maybe eight yard line. Excuse me, excuse me, fourth and eight yards to go. They get the ball past the original line of scrimmage. Yeah. 
you know, really back at the exact spot you were just at. Yeah. So maybe you should, well, we're past that. Fourth down, and we're going to get an offsides here. I think that's A.J. Johnson at the top of your screen just got caught. Guarding Peyton Maxwell. And really, it's one thing to get an offsides on one of your linemen. Another thing just for the receiver, one of your defenders out on the edge to get that penalty. And again, fourth and eight. Now is fourth and three. Especially when it's one of your most more experienced players. And he is pretty close up on the line again to Maxwell. Keeper, Ben Schmidt, going to go forward. I don't think he's going to get there, yeah, but they're going to give it to him. He's got I it. thought his knee and maybe butt went down at around the 40-yard line and then rolled forward, but they are going to give it to him. It just seemed to me that he went down a little early, but no contest from the Cougar sideline on that. But the first down is gained seven minutes 50 seconds left to go in our game clock rolling throw trying to find Xavion Martin incomplete Luke Simpson around in the area for coverage for the Cougars bring up second down does stop the clock at 737 42-35 again the score. Railers on top. Boy, and we, we, got, we see a lot of Cougars coming off limping. Yeah, and I think that's at least the second time I've seen Carter Kirby come off limping. Second and 10. Forrest going to get it. Has a wow. hole. Flag comes in. Flag on at the 35-yard line, and that could be in the area of a hold. And the, they're walking it back. And they're going to call that on Braden Butterweck, who they kind of mentioned earlier may have gotten away with the hold and maybe yeah. didn't get away with that one that time. Allowed maybe that hole to be as big as it was. Second down and 16. It's and Forrest going to have the wide side of the field. Gets by the original wow. line of scrimmage. Ball comes out, but it's out of bounds. And I think Forrest has the first down by solid by a good yard or two. Yeah. Picks up about 18 on that play. Joe McCall comes off the field for the Cougars. Again, the Cougars have had this game, and they've just let it slip away from them. Still plenty of time, but this is a very crucial set of downs here for this defense to keep it a one-score game. First and 10, handoff, Forrest, give him six on first down. And he's running with a new mission, it looks like. Brandon Fletcher around there as well for the tackle. Looks like he's running to get a first down. Kyron Whitaker comes off the field for the Cougars. Second down for the Railers, 6.30 and counting. Left in the ball game. Handoff, Forrest has running room. Going to roll over his tackler, number 68 for the Cougars, and that's going to give him another first down. Kind of was tackled. Well, let's see. You know, they're going to roll him a yard short. I guess they're saying maybe he didn't roll over. 
Case and Dietz there maybe was down beforehand. I thought it certainly it's looked like he rolled down over. Third down. I believe it is third down. Oh, he it was second it. and five. Now third and one or third and inches really. Quarterback sneak. And he's gonna no, pull he's it. Schmidt's gonna out. pull it. Gonna look for somebody. Gonna throw over the middle. And there could have been a flag there on AJ Johnson. Got a little bit of a jersey, I thought. Trying to find Peyton Maxwell. It seemed like Maxwell was trying to get around Johnson, and Johnson got some shoulder pad, but no throw of the flag. And here's your big fourth down. And really, you would think that'd be an area of a quarterback sneak, but with Schmidt in the shotgun formation, I just don't know if they're able to do that here. Try to do a hard count. Cougars do not jump. Ten on the play clock. Could try it again. They're coming And they up. did try it again. And they may just wait for this and call timeout. But no, they are going to. And no, they do get the timeout. Sam Sellers yelling for the delay a game before the timeout. But doesn't get it. And it just seems like more than often when you have that play clock down, you get that timeout call from the coach. They're usually going to grant that timeout before yeah. they grant that delay a game penalty. Yeah, assuming that's if what he's standing anywhere in your vicinity. Was understanding that's my understanding. That's what Sam Sellers is arguing about. They really, you know, they started out the first quarter playing good defense. They need to play that kind of defense right about now. Colin Hirschberger going to attempt the field goal to make it a two-possession game. Oh, they need to block this. They need to block this. I was thinking if it was maybe in Hirschberger's range. Has been perfect on extra points so far tonight. This one much farther away and on the left hash. And it's kick oh, is up no good. And oh, it's good. It is no good. I think he missed it off to the left. Yeah, Had right. just enough distance. But the stop the Cougars needed to keep it at one score. 544 left in the game. Cougars down a touchdown. Steve. Both teams still, or excuse me, uh, Cougars with three timeouts, Railers with two. We'll see if those become a factor in this drive, but five minutes, 44 seconds, still plenty of time to move the ball down the field. Ball is going to be in the middle of the field on the 20-yard line. Jackson Hayes in motion. Weston Free is going to quarterback keep it and will get nothing on the play. Dehan Nelson in on the tackle of freeze. Five wide for the Cougars. Freeze going to throw Schreiber pass complete and spun out of bounds. Maybe uh, a yard shy. Ankle. And yeah, he, I didn't see the leg there of what happened. I don't know if he got stepped on or landed on somebody on the sideline. But A.J. Johnson now comes on the field. No time to rest here. Third and one for the Cougars. Free is going to have to roll out right side. Runs all the way back to his original line of scrimmage. Just going to take it first down. as the first down. Very smart play by Weston that Freeze. Was super smart. Just to take the ball and get that one yard that he needed. Ran a long way for one yard gain. But he got it. And that's the good thing. Schreiber still kind of nursing, maybe it seems, that right leg. And there's a free rusher on freeze, but he just gets it off enough. And luckily, that was a forward pass and not a backwards pass. Throw a little low for A.J. Johnson, but maybe could have been scooped up off the ground. 
and had two rushers on the back side, and maybe it's designed that way as Freeze is supposed to get the ball out of his hands quick. Still going to stay five wide. Clock stops 5.01. Freeze going to roll out right side. He's going. And will another smart play. Picks up 11 for the first down and out of bounds. Freeze making it happen Wouldn't on the stay. ground. Five wide again. Freeze, man, coming for him, going to step up again. He's past the line. There's the flag. Almost intercepted. Incomplete. And Tonowich looked like out there to intercept that, but this time the flag is thrown as Freeze is, was past the line right when he threw it. Official threw it, but there is another flag on the play, so, and they're putting them close to each other, so I'm assuming they called the same thing. It seems like the second time tonight that's happened, but finally gets caught that time. If you ask me, it's probably the third time. Maybe. Second 14 now. Jackson Hayes in motion. Handoff bully, but he lost the ball. He, got, he picked pick it, it up. up. He picked it up. On the verge of the seventh turnover by the Cougar offense, but just able to pick it up off the ground and get a couple yards. Third and 12, certainly you'd think two down territory here, just trying to get something back. Freeze, gonna roll out, throw on the run for Schreiber, too far out in front of him, incomplete. And we may have your ball game here at 4th and 12. If you knew your defense could hold, you'd be okay. But your defense Certainly. hasn't he held the whole second half. Certainly don't at this point. Tayon McDaniel coming on the field as Luke Simpson came off. Free some Good protection. Going to roll from left. Now back to right. Going to run for it. I think he's got enough room. Going to cut he up. He does. And will be. First Stays down. in bounds. Would have maybe hoped he got out of bounds, but still 4.03 on the clock. Stops momentarily for the first down. Crucial pickups on the ground by Weston Freeze. Keeps the drives alive. Cougars wanted to hurry this up. Freeze had to tie his shoe for a sec. They're going to run option. Pitched Owen Bully. Going to cut up go. the middle. There you go. Going to be out across the 35-yard line. Another first down for the Cougars. Cougars still going to go fast. Don't necessarily need to, but going to keep up the pressure. Ball on the 27-yard line, handoff, bully, and going to be taken Take down. down. Yeah. Really had an open, maybe a missed block there by Nick Arias. Had a man come right by him to tackle Owen Bully. They're going to run option again. Good read they by Weston it. Freeze. And will be tackled, gets another first down, mark him down at the 15-yard line. This is what the doctor ordered. Freeze putting the drive on his back so far. This is exactly what the doctor ordered. They need to put this in, score. First down, ball on the 15. Bully going to be wrapped up immediately. Denham Nelson comes in on the back side of that play to wrap up Owen Bully for a loss of three. Look at him. He looks as though he's not. 
Kind of bending over, hands on the hips for Owen Bully. Like he's pretty tired, but he's going both ways. Freeze going to have a man in his face. Another one, but will be dragged down. These, they're going to rule that. They're going to rule Freeze down, which is the correct call. I was waiting for, as the ball came out, I was waiting for them to rule Railer ball. But that is the correct call. It was real close, though. What are you drawing up here on third and 21? You know what it's got to be over the top. You got to get some yards back to make it a little bit better fourth down attempt. Freeze going to launch end zone. Oh. Hit, but they're not going to have a flag. And I think, granted, I'm pretty far away from the call, from the play, but I think that's a decent no call as I think the arm that came in was going for the football of the defender of the Railers. A couple hands in the air, but really not. Well, here we go with the ball amount. game right now. Certainly is. Minute 36. If you're Sam Sellers, do you take a timeout here to just try and draw something up? Still have all three. And doesn't look like they are going to do that. Plenty of time on the play clock. Here's your ball game. Freeze. Going to have to throw it. End zone as A.J. Johnson Got wide it. open touchdown. for the touchdown. Wow. Seemed like the defender fell down. Wow. And A.J. Johnson was wide open. And it seemed like it took forever that for that ball to get it there. It did. And those are those plays, like you mentioned, when you're wide open. <laughs> and look at this. Look at this. Cougars looking for the win. To bully. Uh, I think he got there. They're going to rule him short. Bully upset saying he made it, and he's going to get There's an unsportsmanlike conduct there. And we're really just going to have to see at the end of this game, see that replay. It seemed like when Bully landed, it seemed like the ball was over. But certainly a knee could have been down before that. And they actually are right there on the spot. So and you see so many times at all the levels, just because you land, in the end zone with your arm does not mean that's where you were when your feet were down. That's and again, correct. we're giving certainly the officials the benefit of the doubt here as we may be able to look at this after the fact. I don't even fact. know why did we go for that. Well, I can tell you right now, I, you may have to correct me what year it was, but the state championship game that – the Cougars tied it up, and they decided to go for two for the win. Did not get it. I think really just tried to catch the Railers off guard. And now the Cougar is down a point with 128 to go. And now they got to get an onside kick. And they're certainly backed up 15 yards due to the penalty from Owen Bully after he contests he was in the end zone. Caden Budkey with it. And we're going to get a timeout by the Railers here, I think. Certainly the question 
at the end of the game and all through next week will be going for it. It will be the question. I don't know if maybe, and again, this is just us trying to read Sam Sellers' mind, but thinking that his team had the momentum, hurry up quick, catch him off guard. Maybe he thought a minute 28 was too much time for the Railers to get back. Maybe did not want to play for overtime. Was not confident in his defense in overtime. But so far, I've rolled the dice. And you could maybe say one of the dice rolls has stopped with that two-point conversion. But there's still one dice roll still alive, and it's on this onside kick. Budkey, nice bounce in the air, fielded by the Railers. Luke Hirsch got it. And the Railers will take over. Important to note, Cougars need a stop here. The game isn't over as the Cougars are alive by three timeouts with a minute 28 left. First down will certainly end it. Kenyon Forrest will pick up a solid four yards on first down, first time out from the Cougars, taken. They've got to stop them from getting the first down. And I, even if that play at the two-point conversion comes back and we clearly see that Owen Bully was in the end zone, as a umpire myself for four years in the sport of baseball, you just can't let the official dictate the end of that game, meaning you can't blame the official as maybe you could say that one play did it, but there were so many other plays. Oh, yeah that led and you can't that. lose your composure certainly you're looking at a 15 yard differential where that ball would be without the penalty of frustration of Owen Bully second down Forrest around the edge a big mistake I would say as he goes out, out of bounds, bounds. He does pick up another three yards, but the Cougars don't have to take a timeout as he's out of bounds at the Cougar 35-yard line. But this right here may be the biggest third down of the game. Third and four. They've got to hold him right Certainly now. Certainly looking for a run here of Kenyon Forrest. He's Schmidt rolling takes out. it. Going to flip it to Butterwick. Has the first down. And game over. No flags on the play. Game over. You thought maybe Jarrett Pittenger was going to be able to swallow up Schmidt, but just tossed it a few yards to Braden Butterwick for the first down. Cougars take their second timeout with 59 seconds on the clock. And even, you know, playing, certainly playing hypotheticals here, let's say. 
Newton only gained a couple yards on that last play, I would have expected Newton's offense to go for it again on that fourth down. Uh, you had third and four. I would have oh, yeah, expected. They went for it. I would have expected them to go for it. Certainly in the area of the field they were at, but really just go for that win. But the Cougars weren't able to stop them, and certainly everyone in the building expecting a run. Schmidt. And he flipped that. That was a real good flip. Yeah, it was really just a flip and victory formation here. And number 68 for the Cougars, Case and Dietz. Let them know that this game ain't over yet. And it looks like maybe Sam Sellers is going to concede as the final 40 seconds are going to tick off. Cougars still have that one timeout left, but it might not matter. This may be your final snap. Newton appears to pick up their first win of the season against the Cougars. It's five on the play clock. And we'll be downed. A lot of frustration from the Cougars right now. And it appears that's going to be the end of the game as the final 10 seconds wow. tick off the clock. Raiders come into Salina Stadium and pick up their first win against the Cougars. They win it here by a point, 42-41. We'll be back with some post game right after this. Welcome to the post game show. I'm here with uh, this week's Remax Player of the Week, Mr. Jared. And it looked like you guys had a tough game tonight. Yeah, it was. It wasn't how we thought it was going to end, but, you know, sometimes we just don't make it, you know. So one thing I want to say, I know you noticed you were going both ways tonight. Yeah, I was. Uh, we had our starting running back out, Brent Cox. So we kind of, through the week, we didn't know what we were going to do, but we ended up going with um, – Owen Bully and me at running back, and so that's how that went. And then I start on defense. So on. were you a little tired going oh, yeah, back and forth? I was exhausted. <laughs> Dude, that was the most I've run back and forth in a while. <laughs> I'm, oh, man. And how did Phil score that touchdown? Oh, it, it was a blast. Oh, man, that was the greatest <laughs> thing ever. I will never let that pass. Well, okay. thank you, Jared, for being this week's Player of the Week. Thank you. Hello and welcome back to the Slimy Connection post-game show here with head coach Sam Sellers of the Salina South Cougars. Coach, really just a heartbreaker tonight, but one thing I really want to start with is despite the interceptions and turnovers on offense, when you guys needed it most, Weston Freeze led the team down the field for a, just a great drive to set up just the chance for that two-point conversion. Just talk about the play of Weston Freeze, that offense, despite all of the turnovers tonight. Um, uh, honestly, I'd like – I mean – our, obviously, it's very disappointing. It was a tough, tough one to lose. Um, and and our biggest issue all year has been when things don't go our way, we don't respond to them well at all. And and Weston did have a monster drive there to go try to win it there. And and but I, I was awfully proud of our kids that tonight they fought and they and things a lot of things didn't go our way. Um, and and they continued to fight, you know, in, in all three phases of the game and and. Um, you know, to, to have seven turnovers and some big defensive mistakes um, and, and to still come up, I guess, technically short, but probably not short <laughs> um, on the on the two point play there um, is it, tough. And, you know, it was, it was a pretty broken hearted locker room after the game, but um, I, was, I was awfully proud of them, you know, because, again, that's been our issue all year is you know that tough that mental toughness of when things go bad you know we, we play bad football and and we the kids fought their tails off tonight and uh just kind of also on the offensive side has some players step up big owen bully Jarrett pittenger luke simpson just talk about how they contributed to the game tonight and just uh what your thoughts on those players were tonight well and, and no not having brant we we had to lean heavy on those those guys and um so proud of owen bully um that kid from where he was as a sophomore and, and kind of forced into action to now is just I love him to death um, the, he's he's a great kid and, and um, you know 
played good football tonight and, and did some good things. And, you know, we, we, we kind of talked as, as an offense that, you know, one, one of the guys is not going to replace Bryant. Like, it's not Owen's job or Jared's job or whatever. To, it's it's got to be the entire group. And, you know, we uh, if you take away seven turnovers, which is a crazy number, um, but we, we played some pretty good football offensively. And, and, and we're able, even without Brandt, to have good balance, you know, run and pass. And, and, and you know, you, you talk about Weston in that last drive. And the, the thing that I love the most probably, and he's such a playmaker, and he's just a sophomore, which is really exciting um, for me and, yep. and for, for our program. But um, to see him scramble is something. I mean, he's, he's an athletic kid and has great natural instincts. And, um, he, I mean, he picked up some big first downs for us with his feet on that drive. And, um, you know, that's that's a part of his game that um, is is developing and, and he's going to become a, a big, big problem for teams when he's doing both both throwing the ball over the field and, and running. And coach, last question for you. Got a big game next week. Maybe you heard of it. Uh, of course, South Central kind of just with the loss tonight. What's kind of I mean, it's easy to get excited for South Central, but what's kind of the message to regroup after a tough loss tonight? Well, it's a lot easier to regroup. I mean, you know, like I said, that was a broken-hearted locker room after the game, and um, you, you know, say, fellas, it's Central Week now, and and all of a sudden, you know, it's not like they're smiling or anything like that, sure. but it's kind of one of those things of, all right, like you know, it's a big week, and and so yeah, it, it's it's nice to be able to to it makes the the, the super bitter pill tonight, you know, kind of. Kind of makes you get over it fast because obviously it's a big one next week. Coach, thanks so much, and we'll see you back here next week for the big one. Appreciate it. Come watch your favorite team and earn points with our new Blazing Rewards program only at Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings, beer, sports. Hi, I'm Nathan Wilkham, manager at the Longhorn Steakhouse here in Salina, Kansas. We are proud supporters of our local high school sports team and our community. I'd like to invite you to join us for a great meal at Longhorn Steakhouse. We are open Sunday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m., and Friday and Saturday from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. We hope to see you at our restaurant, and when you do, ask for me or our managing partner, Sarah Grimes. We'd love to say hello. At Domino's, they work hard to make it easy for you to earn free pizza. How hard? We probably don't have enough time to talk about all the ways they've invented for you to order, but we do have time to talk about the new ways you can earn Piece of the Pie rewards points towards free pizza. Now you can earn points when you place an order by phone or in store. That means you can earn points any way you order. If you would like to enroll, see dominoes.com rewards or call Domino's. Papa John's is proud to provide this week's meal to the hardworking Friday night football crew at Community Access Television. While watching the big game, don't forget to order your freshly made pizza at papajohns.com.